When it comes to winter fishing, the underspin can be a vital lure to have in your tackle box. The underspin, however, shines all year and can catch some nice sized fish. This proven clear water technique is definitely underutilized by many bass fishermen. I am here to tell you today that it can help you catch your next personal best. In this video, I am going to tell you these five common mistakes that I see many anglers make whenever they fish the underspin. Many of these common underspin mistakes are easy to fix and will greatly increase how many bass you catch out on the water. If you enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. It would mean a lot to me. We're going for 5k by the end of the year and it would mean so much to me if you guys subscribed. So make sure you stay tuned to the video and let me know what you think about these five common underspin mistakes. The first mistake I see many people making when fishing the underspin is not using the right profile for the body of water they are fishing on. Whenever I go fishing and plan on using the underspin, one of the first things I will do at the boat ramp is look for bait fish in the water. I will try to match the size of the bait fish I can see and if I cannot see the bait fish I will generally go with anywhere from a 2.8 to a 3.8 inch Kitek fat swing impact. If I don't get a bite on the larger size Kitek for a while I will downsize then but most of the time I'm going to be throwing that 3.8 in. It's also important to know what type of forage the bass in your local body of water are going to be feeding on. For example here in North Carolina we have a lot of blueback herrings in our lake so I like to mimic them quite a bit and I generally have pretty good luck on it. However I will always have a shad pattern, a bluegill pattern, and a trout pattern in my tackle box too. Depend on what forage you have in your local body of water will help you determine what type of forages you should imitate. The second mistake I see many anglers make when they are using the underspin is not using the right trailer. Selecting the right trailer is one of the most important things that you can do whenever you're fishing an underspin, especially when the water gets cold. One of my favorite types of trailers to use is the Kitek Fat Swing Impact. This is hands down one of the best trailers to use on an underspin. The Kitek Fat Swing Impact kicks hard back and forth compared to other brands and can be just what the bass want. You can use any paddle tail that you want but the Kitek Fat Swing Impact is definitely the most popular choice among anglers. Some other popular choices to use are the Mega Bass Spark Shad and the Strike King Rage Swimmer. One of the most important pieces of advice I could tell you when bass fishing is to experiment with your lures. In this case you can experiment with the trailers to really key in on what the bass are going to be wanting and what they're feeding on for that day and it never hurts to try something new and who knows you might find the new trailer that you want to put on the back of your underspin. The third mistake I see people making when fishing with the underspin is not fishing it on the right type of gear. When fishing with an underspin I like to use a bait caster that is a medium heavy due to the single hook on the underspin. You don't want too heavy of a rod or you will constantly be ripping that hook out of that fish's mouth. The next thing to consider when fishing with an underspin is what pound test line you should use. This will vary greatly depending on where you're at in the country and the conditions. If the water is ultra clear I would recommend using 10 pound test fluorocarbon but you can go even lighter than this but this will severely impact how much you break off. Since I fish in pretty clear water most of the time I just stick with 10 pound test. The final thing you need to consider when fishing an underspin is the jig head you are using and how heavy it is. A good rule of thumb is if you're wanting to fish the underspin higher up in the water column and slowly retrieve the underspin, you should try to use as light of a jig head as possible. If you're wanting to fish the underspin deeper in the water column, you might want to use a heavier underspin, but you'll have to retrieve it quicker than if you're using a lighter one. Keeping these things in mind will improve how many bass you can catch when you're throwing an underspin. The fourth mistake I see many anglers make is fishing the underspin the same way. The underspin is such a versatile lure that can be fished in many different situations. Many anglers think of fishing the underspin higher up in the water column for suspending bass, but the underspin excels in deeper water conditions too. There's many different styles of jig heads on the market that you can get that will work in many different situations. For example, if you're wanting to fish the underspin around a lot of cover, you can use a weedless head so you don't get hung up as much. Depending on where you live in the country will greatly determine what type of jig head you will need to use. I also see many anglers fishing the underspin with the same retrieve the whole way back to them. You will get a lot more bites by adding twitches and changing up your retrieval speeds. When I am fishing with an underspin I like to stop reeling so the underspin will slowly start falling down in the water column. This mimics a dying bait fish and will get you more bites out on the water. Many bass anglers assume that the underspin is only a clear water technique. I am here to tell you today that you 
you can fish this in stained and muddy water too. The bass will key in on the vibrations of the blade and your paddle tail moving through the water. You can catch some big fish doing this because the bass will not be used to seeing an underspin in those conditions. Next time you're out on the water and the visibility is not the greatest, try this out and you will be surprised at how hard the bass can hit this lure. The fifth mistake I see many anglers make is not targeting the right areas when fishing the underspin. The underspin really excels around schooling bait fish and can land you a huge bite. The underspin stands out to the other bait fish because of the blade giving it a slightly different presentation. By standing out from the rest of the schooling bait fish, the bass will key in on your lure. The underspin will produce some huge bass when fishing it around schooling bait fish and can potentially land you your next personal best. Most people think that the only situation you can throw an underspin is around schooling bait fish. However, the underspin also works in other situations when schooling bait fish are not present. A good rule of thumb is if the bass are holding on to any type of structure, throwing the underspin can trigger a reaction strike from the bass. Next time you're on the water and the bass are holding on to structure, Try throwing the underspin and you will be surprised at the quality of bass you can get to bite this lure. The underspin also does well around suspended bass. The underspin looks like a big and easy meal when the bass are looking up at it from below. This will trigger a reaction strike out of them, especially during the winter time when they do not have to use as much energy compared to the warmer months whenever they're gonna be using a lot more. The trick when targeting suspending bass with the underspin is to keep the underspin above the bass you're trying to target. This will keep you from getting your underspin snagged and most of the time bass will hit the underspin from below. Next time you have suspended bass, try throwing an underspin. You'll be surprised at how well it works. These are the top five mistakes people make when fishing the underspin. Following these five tips will greatly increase the quality and the quantity of the bass you will catch. Let me know if this video helped you out in the comment section below. Also let me know if you've had luck using the underspin before. If you enjoyed this video, Make sure you hit that like button to help the video in the YouTube algorithm so more people can get recommended this video. If you are not subscribed, I would love to have you join the channel. If you want to check out another proven fish catcher in the wintertime, make sure you check out this video I made talking about the jig.